In an earlier lesson, you saw how to use a for next loop to count through the items of a collection. A slightly more convenient and elegant way to loop through a collection is to use a for each loop, as we'll demonstrate in this part of the lesson. Let's start by opening the workbook that I've already downloaded and extracted, and then when the file is opened, choose to enable any content if required. The workbook contains eight worksheets, each of which contains a table with information about the group stages of the 2018 FIFA World Cup. What we'd like to do is create a chart for each of these worksheets, and we'll use a for each loop to do it. Let's head into the Visual Basic Editor and find module number one. This module already has a subroutine which allows us to delete all the charts in the workbook, which we'll need to use a little bit later on. For now, let's create a new subroutine called create group charts. So we can create a sub called create group charts. A for each loop requires a variable which can hold a reference to a single object. The type of object variable you declare will depend on the collection you're intending to loop over. In this example, we're looping over the worksheets collection, and each object in that collection is a worksheet object. So let's begin by declaring a variable which can hold a reference to a single worksheet. I'll give mine a short, succinct, abbreviated name, WS, as worksheet. The variable will be used to hold a reference to each object in the collection, one by one, as the loop is processed. To begin processing the loop, we write the for each statement, followed by the name of the variable we've declared, so in this case, WS. On the same line, we then state which collection we're looping over by writing the in keyword, followed by the name of the collection, which in this case is called worksheets. You may find it useful and in some cases necessary to refer to the object which contains the collection you're looping over. When we reference worksheets like so, the loop will attempt to loop through the worksheets collection of whichever workbook is active on screen at the point the code was run. To make sure that it loops through the worksheets in the workbook we're currently adding our code to, we can precede the reference to the worksheets collection with a reference to the this workbook object. So we can say for each WS in this workbook.worksheets. To tell the loop to move on to the next object in the collection, you can write the next keyword, optionally followed by the name of the variable. The loop will now process the collection of worksheets, setting a reference to each worksheet in the collection in the WS variable, one by one until there are no more worksheets to process. Let's add some basic sample code to the loop to prove this. We'll have a debug.print statement, which will print out the name of each worksheet. So we can say ws.name. So that we can see the results of this subroutine, let's view the immediate window by heading to the view menu and choosing immediate window, or by pressing Ctrl and G, and then click back into the subroutine, and let's use the F8 key to step through the first couple of iterations of the loop. So you can hopefully see here that we're looping through the sheets one at a time, not all in one go, so each sheet gets printed out one after the other. At this point, I'm going to press F5 to continue running the subroutine all the way through to the end, and you'll see again that it stops automatically once it's run out of worksheets to process. Now let's add some useful code into the loop to perform the task of creating a chart for each worksheet. Let's close the immediate window and remove the debug.print statement. We can then declare a variable to hold a reference to the chart that we're creating. This will just make our life a little easier when we try to manipulate it once it's been created. So let's say dim ch as chart. Next, we can add an instruction to the for each loop, which creates a new chart and returns a reference to the chart that was created to the ch variable. So let's say set ch equals this workbook dot charts dot add. We'd like to move the chart so that it sits after the worksheet to which it belongs. So let's say ch.move and then use the after parameter to reference the worksheet that is referred to by the ws variable. We'd also like to change the chart's name so that it has the same name as the worksheet followed by the literal word chart. So let's say ch.name equals ws.name followed by an ampersand and then the literal text chart. 
Finally, we can set the source data for the chart by referencing the relevant range of cells on the worksheet referred to by the WS variable. So let's say ch.setSourceData, and then we can pass a reference to the range of cells to the source parameter. We can say ws.range a1, and then simply use the current region property to refer to the entire table to which range a1 belongs. At this point, we can run the subroutine and check the results in Excel. We should see a bunch of new charts appear in the Project Explorer. And if we switch into the Excel window, we should see that each group worksheet has a corresponding group chart. And you can feel free to click through these to see the charts referring to the data on each sheet. If you do intend to run the subroutine a second time, do make sure that you've deleted the existing chart sheets. Otherwise, you'll get errors referring to charts with the same name not being allowed to exist in the same workbook. You could refer to the delete all charts or run the delete all charts method before you attempt to run the create group charts subroutine, or even just place a call to the delete all charts method. The first thing that you do inside the create group charts subroutine. If I run that one this time, we'll see that we don't get any error messages. We just get a brand new set of charts with the same names as they had earlier.